Trailblazer League. Reloaded. What is it? For those of you who don't know, Old School RuneScape is releasing their fourth league ever. Uh, coming November 15th and lasting for eight weeks. We have my personal favorite game mode in the game. Coming back and making a return. For you, those, for those of you who don't know me, um, I am a avid RuneScape player, currently playing on a UIM that is nearing nearing max within about just just shy of a year now of playtime. And for some context, uh, when Trailblazer League One came out, which was League Two, um, I played four different accounts all at the same time, following their game mode, and got the highest ranking reward in all four accounts and as an experienced player i figured why not share my knowledge why not help somebody new who doesn't know what is trailblazer league what does this mean how can i participate what do i get what do i even do it's so confusing and i figured i'd share some insight on what trailblazer league actually is um, and kind of go from there so with that in mind, what is Trailblazer League? Trailblazer League is a temporary game mode, like I said. It lasts for eight weeks, starting November 15th. It'll go to approximately January 10th. We don't have an official end date on it yet, but around January 10th, which should be eight weeks. Um, and the game mode starts everybody off as an Iron Man, level three, one, and all your stats besides um, HP. And the gimmick here, well, there's a couple of them, but the main gimmick is you only get a handful of regions across all of Gilinor that you get to play in. Um, and you have to make some tough decisions, some choices on where should, where should you go, what should you unlock, what order should you do unlock the, these regions. And from there that completely changes your experience how i will play league and how you might play league and the grinds we go on and the goals we get and the best gear we might even have access to might be completely different um and that's what i really like about trailblazer league is when i think about mmos i think about how carving your own path is like one of the funnest things about these games it's how can i get from where i'm at to my goal and do it how I want to and have fun doing it. And I feel like RuneScape has lost a lot of that. There's a lot of metagaming of like, this is the most efficient way to do this. This is the best way to do this if I want to AFK. This is the best way to do this if I want to sit down and play and get some really, really high XP. And you can do that still in leagues. But because these regions interact differently and how you make different combinations change how you can play and what resources you have and what your best methods might be, you might have to discover new methods for yourself or find new ways to accomplish the various goals you want. And that carving your own path, I think, is just super fun. Um, and so how this these areas work is everybody, every player, will spawn in in Lumbridge like normal. And in Lumbridge, you will have access to two regions, which are highlighted on this map here in the lower right, which is Karamja and Mistelin. So Karamja, you should know, is the island with the volcano on it you have access to brimhaven um, there's a player on house portal there you can do the fight arena with all the czars you can do the inferno uh, there's a lot of stuff on karamja and then secondly you have mistelin and mistelin's a little bit of a different region in that it encompasses a couple of cities so you start out with lumbridge all the way north to varrock you do not go into the wilderness and you get to go to the west all the way to about Barbarian Village in Draenor. If you think about uh, Draenor, how uh, on the left side going into like Port Sarim, there's that fence gate there. Basically straight up from that fence is the cutoff on what you have access to. Um, but you do get Edgeville and Barbarian Village in that area. And then kind of thirdly in that region, you also get Fossil Island, which is the... Um, island where you can do birdhouse runs and underwater seaweed growing uh, is like the main things most people go to that island for. Um, 
And you have access to that all right from the very beginning. But the rest of the map you don't. And so you might ask, how do I how do I unlock these places? How many do I get? Well, the answer is you get three more total, and that's it. It's a heavy weighted decision because you don't get access to everywhere. There's, I want to say nine or ten regions, and of those regions, you get three of them, a third of the map. So how do you how do you make those decisions? How do you unlock them? what gets you to those those regions and the answer is tasks so this is the the other thing with leagues that's kind of different um this is pretty standard across every league um in the sense of there are tasks uh but these tasks do change between le leagues and we don't have any information on what those tasks are usually until like the day of if not maybe if we're lucky the night before uh they'll release the task list we may get a couple of spoilers here and there but right now we're just kind of basing this off of the last time they did trailblazer league which was this region locked gimmick um and they're redoing that revamping it or making some changes but these are some example tasks that we had the last time so the the task can be as easy as enter the cook's guild finish cook's assistant all the way to as hard as complete the infernal cape um and as you complete these tasks you get you unlock two different things the first is your areas as you complete x amount of tasks i think in the first trailblazer league like once you finish 60 tasks total around the map in your specific areas that you have unlocked you get the choice to pick one extra region unlocks that area all the tasks all the rewards all the loot all the bosses all the skilling methods from that region um which is really cool. Now, if you look at the map, one thing to consider is if I have Mistalin and Karamja and I unlock Fremenic, right? I want to go go up to the with the Vikings and kill the Dagonoths, uh, kill Musfa, right? How do I get there? And this is something that's really cool, but you actually will end up having ways to teleport directly from your regions to the, the other regions without having to run all the way there. Uh, which is really nice because it just makes it to where you don't have to have connecting regions. You can have any of them without ruining that. So back to the tasks, right? You complete these tasks. After every X amount of tasks, you unlock your first region, and then you continue doing more tasks, and eventually hit another threshold, and you unlock your second, and then you hit your last threshold, and you unlock your last area, your third region. And I'll, you can't change those. Once you've made that decision, you're you're locked in. Um, so it is a very heavy decision, um, and you really want to think about it. Luckily, all of the regions are usually balanced very well. It's very rare that you'll find a region that is like falling behind or harder to get through. Usually, they will have pretty good early gate, early level tasks for people who choose it as their first region, so that way it balances out. Even some things that you might think might be really end game, like Tyrwin, which has your Priftinus, your Song of the Elves area, right? What do you do as a low level? But there are normal logs there there are like butterflies and stuff you can catch there are rabbits you can kill and cook their meat and that might be a task right so there is low level stuff you can do in those areas that'll help you unlock and keep propelling yourself forward so you can't really lock yourself out of progressing which is a great great thing now i didn't mention there's two things you unlock with these tasks the second is there are um points or like tiers associated with all these tasks so like uh, finish cook's assistant might be an easy task and that will probably only be worth 10 points right while completing the obtaining an infernal cape might be a master task and that's worth 500 points right and so there's you can do a whole bunch of easy tasks but it might be worth gunning for one of those elite master tasks that give you more points because those points, when you hit different thresholds, will unlock a tier of relics. Um, and le again, this is all kind of speculation. They might change it up, they might ch change it a little bit. But in the tiers of relics, you get a couple of things. The first is usually uh, some change in a passive effect of some form. Now, in leagues, one thing that's really fun and really cool is you actually get an XP multiplier right out of the get-go from the first time you start, all, and you get a drop rate modifier. So in the prior leagues, it was five times the XP um, right out of the get-go. 
and everything was all the important big hard drops to get were double the drop rates everything was just more common to get uh, which is really nice it makes it to where you can really progress through these and get these drops and these tasks done way faster than you normally would and you can get to these higher levels and get to the end game really really fast eight weeks might not sound like a lot but people will get 200 mil experience and skills in those eight weeks because they can uh, because the xp is just gets so crazy and so as you unlock these relic tiers um those buffs might increase so it might go from five times xp to eight times all the way up to i think in leagues one it was 16 times the xp which is crazy if you think about it like your experience is so fast and then your drop rates get up to eight ten times xp as likely so things get really 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 common too and those numbers will change who knows what they'll settle and they haven't announced any of that yet but just get your brain thinking about what those um how much faster leagues is in comparison to the normal game and then lastly you get relics and in the prior leagues they gave you three different choices of a relic and a tier and you get to choose again have a really important decision you have to choose one of them and you can't switch it you get just the one one relic you are locked in, and that's it. So this is some examples of the third relic tier from Leagues 1. Um, and these may basically pick a combat style for the rest of the leagues. And it made your combat style really, really, really good. It made your attacks attack twice as fast. It made your weapons more accurate. Um, in the case of Quick Shot, so your range relic, you had a 90% ammo save. Uh, save with double cast for, for mage, you didn't use as much runes. So you didn't have to go buy as many blood runes to cast your barrage spells. You didn't have to catch as many chinchampas to throw them to get your range level up really fast. Uh, and so as you make these decisions with these relics in these uh, regions together, you end up curating these really customized accounts where you might have pick in, picked the same regions as somebody else, but because you chose different relics throughout it, your paths are still completely different. You might be going for a melee weapon as fast as you can because you chose Fluid Strike, and your best friend who's taking the same region that you might be going down a mage route, and so they're really looking for a Tumican's Shadow from Tombs of Amasiat, to, so that way their Tumican's Shadow can attack at half the speed with more accuracy, and it's super cheap to cast with X, like... It's wild how, how crazy some of these uh, things can get. And then a couple of the other things that they announced that they're bringing back for sure that was really, really busted, ends up being really fun, is this thing called Last Recall. And it's an item that you can use that if you teleport away from a location, it saves in the crystal where you teleported from. And you can click it to go back. So when you're killing bosses, right... You'd be sitting at God Wars Dungeon and you can go kill Bandos, right? You can run in with your Tumican's Shadow. You can blast it three or four times with your Relic. It dies. And then you see if it dropped you anything good. You teleport away to your bank or your house and click on your uh, Restoration Pool. And then you click Last Recall and boom, you're right back at Bandos and you're in. There's, that's it. Nothing else to do. And you're just right back into the boss. So the restocks are really fast. You don't have to keep doing the running, the prep. All of that is just super, super accelerated. And it's so much fun. Um, and so kind of what in that in mind is, besides just the fun, what's in it for you? Why do you play for eight weeks? Do you get anything on your main accounts? And the answer is you do. Um, there's a lot of rewards that you get. So with these rewards um a couple of them i'll kind of go through some of the highlights there is a couple more um as well but you have an outfit for for leagues that you can walk around and you can show off there's recolors for things like the dins bulwark um the blowpipe you can get a recolor you can have a magma blowpipe which looks super sweet if you ask me um and these recolors come like you end up getting points based on how well you do um, how many tasks you complete those how they have those points that are tied to them and you those transition into points that you can use to buy these in the main game um, lastly most of these were tradable so i would account for you can probably make some decent money doing this too if you don't need the cosmetics you don't care about them but you just want to make a couple million gp and um, you can buy these recolors and and send them on their way right um a handful more there's um a banner recolor you can have your player own house pool be on fire 
Uh, there's a new Venge animation that summons a fiery skull above your head instead when you Venge somebody to kill them. Like, it's super BM and I love it. Um, so there's all sorts of fun things. But really the thing that I think most people want to go around and show off is, is the cups. Um, now, these cups are these are, are trophies, right? Um, and there's different tiers. You have your bronze cup and your iron cup and your steel cup all the way up to the dragon cup, which is the highest rank you can get in these. And I mentioned at the beginning that the last Trailblazer League, I played four different accounts and got the dragon cup on all of them. Um, and how all these work is there's going to be a point threshold that if you get this many points, you hit that cup. And there will be a threshold that's going to be really, really high and about 1% to 2% of players are going to hit it to get the dragon cup. Um, and you can hold this, you hold it with both hands, and you carry it around, and you can run it around in the main game on your account, and it's like, you can't buy it, you have to get it with your points, and it's a huge, huge thing to show off that you accomplish something like this that you can show off on your account uh, by just playing this temporary game mode and having a blast, going through, leveling it up super fast, getting rare drops, that you more rare drops than you could ever dream of. It's, it's just so much fun. Um, and I can't wait. It's I'm so hyped for it. Uh, we're going to end up having a bunch more videos coming down the pipeline. I'm going to start explaining the different regions, things you can unlock, orders you can do. As we start getting more and more spoilers from Jagex, we'll have a little bit more details on all of those. Uh, because speculation is really hard when you don't really know what's coming. But the, this is this is why you should get hyped. This is, this is what Trailblazer League is. And with all said and done... I just can't wait and I hope you join me and I hope you join in um, and if you want to see these guides coming up definitely definitely hit the subscribe button uh, down below I'm gonna try to post a video every couple of days and get bring you guys some really really deep insight on the different regions and what you can do and different routes you can take and uh, really how you can strive to hit one of those upper tier cups and get those rewards or get the get the recolors or make some GP in the real game or honestly just some ways to have some blast with some friends by doing some killer raids and stuff like there's so many different options and I can't wait to explain them all to you.